everybody knows or should know, we, we have a national treasure here at the Sunday. That's my wife said. Well, one, one thing the committee did ask this year was that could I possibly, could the committee actually organise a stripper? Now, we, we've actually got that. No, but we've got two for one. So before Mike does that, he's going to give a talk. Right. Good evening, everybody. Um, well, after all this talk about nursery areas and conservation, I feel almost ashamed to talk about catching the poor bloody thing. But I'm going to do it anyway. Right, now, I know what everybody feels like. They look at the papers, they look at the magazines, and they look at the books, and they think, God, this bloke catches it. Why don't I catch fish like that? But what you have to remember is that everybody who writes about these things only tells you about the good days. You know, nobody wants to read about when they had blank after blank after blank. I do that fairly often. And what I'm going to try to do is give you some idea of how the fishing's changed for me and what the differences are in different types of fishing. Now it's really difficult to compare things because methods change, what you do, where your goals change, all sorts of things like that. But what I'm actually talking about is back where I live. I moved to Dorset in 1965 and I fished the same, I suppose I know, probably no more than three or four miles of coastline from the shore since I moved. Not every day, but fairly often. And I wanted to try to see whether things were better now than they used to be, which is difficult enough, and whether the things we're doing now, one approach was better than another. Now, in the 1960s and 70s, we were happy to catch anything. We had no idea, I had no idea, I came down from the northeast of England, no idea how to catch fish. We just followed the same tactics that other people did, you know, you use a big lump of lead and a, and a bait of some description, pitch it out and hope you catch some. And we did catch a variety of fish. But it's really difficult to compare these things, as I say, because firstly, in terms of bass, stocks have declined. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I've seen it happen. At least, if it hasn't happened anywhere else in the country, it certainly happened down where I fish. And secondly, the tackles improved a lot, so things like braided lines are now everybody virtually, well, I don't know everybody uses them, but a lot of people use them, I certainly use them all the time. And uh, uh, we've got, much to my amazement really, some lures that are actually better than they used to be in years gone by. I think there are only about half a dozen basic types of these things, despite the fact there are probably 500 different models you could buy. But there are not many different types, you know, you get plugs and soft plastics, spinners and so on. Now, this is my grandson Ben, was my grandson Ben, when he caught that little rat. But if you do the same thing every time you go out, it's likely you'll catch the same sort of fish. And people do, I'll see them every, every time if I go down the coast. There'll be people doing the same things that I used to do in the 1960s and they're catching the same pouting and wrasse and stuff like that that I used to catch then. And they catch them. Occasionally they get other things. So you don't, if you do the same thing like that, the, 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 the thing is you don't expect to catch anything different. Than you. So again, this is my grandson Ben again. He doesn't look quite the same now, he's six foot four now. But I took him out, showed him what to do. It's the only time he's done this and he caught this seven and a half pound bass, which he was delighted with. So if you want to improve what you catch, you've got to give a bit of thought to what you're doing. Now in the 1960s and 70s we did exactly that and the book we wrote, Operation Sea Angler, uh, really outlined the way we developed our approach to catching fish and showed how things had improved in those days. And uh, so you've got to give a bit of thought to your method. Now bass are a fantastic example for doing this sort of thing because they eat virtually anything. 
you know, he can put anything on the hook. And sure as hell, a bass will probably eat it. So we catch them on maggots, we catch them on either tea or wood lice, we catch them on crabs, we catch them on fish, we catch them on a variety of lures and flies and things like that. So bass are relatively easy to catch from that point of view. At least they're relatively easy to present something that they will eat. And for since I've been fishing in Dorset, I've swapped ideas with a small group of pals. Most of the first group are now dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm still standing up. <laughs> so it's a different group of pals now than what it was originally. Remind me not to come out with you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't killed them. That's not what... Dave will bear me up. Dave. And now, now I have another group of pals. So you see the two, but they're the, the old ones are the ones in the top picture. <laughs> and the, the, the new ones, are the, uh, some of the new ones in the bottom. There's about eight or nine of us have fished over all those years. And we exchange information. So, you know, there's none of this, you know, I'm not going to tell you about my mark or when I go or what I do. And it's better, it's not just my, it's not just, I'm not just telling you what I do, I'm telling you what all these people do. So if you, a few of you are exchanging, and email was a godsend for this sort of thing, about, you know, where you go, and what you do, and how you do it, it's amazing how quickly you accumulate information on the best things to do. And I'll give you a couple of recent examples from last year. I've been doing this, I'll say now, since the 1960s, so... And you probably can't see all these things, but I think, I think this little pointer gadget will work. Nothing else. Right, so that's the day, that's the chap who was fishing. That's the day that this is about. The 7th of September, that is, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> Last year. And it gives you the time we fished for, so, so many hours where he fished, which I've just given a name to, I'm not giving you where it is, and that's what he caught. So you won't be able to read it from the back, but Bill had 19 bass, the best was two or three quarter pound, and most were two pounds, one a real tiddler, it said. And Richard, who was with him, had five bass, the best was three and three quarters, uh, and a mullet on a maggot fly he had. And Nigel had six bass, all small, he said, so there were some more two or three pounders, I expect. The time of capture was throughout the time we were fishing, which was from uh, quarters seven at night to quarter to eight. That's right. Yeah. No, not quarter to five. Quarter to five. five. Quarter to five to quarter to nine. Quarter to eight, that's right. I'm sorry, it's these, it's these numbers get me coffee. If I was, I should have written the proper times. <laughs> and the, they caught fish all throughout, and they were using either slug gills or flies, and probably some other lures as well. I don't know, I've got all the lures down. And the tide was at uh, 5.50, high, high water was 5.50, and it was a two metre tide, which is a big spring tide down that way. And sea temperature then was 18 degrees, which is pretty warm and the wind and so on. So we put down the information. It says at the bottom, good evening, Richard turned up 30 minutes after Nigel and I, plenty of weed, plenty of bass and mullet about. So I'd more or less agree with that. And that's a picture of where they were fishing. Bill took that picture of the surface. You can see all the mullet feeding on the surface there with the gobs out of the water, skimming the maggots on top. And the bass would be doing the same thing. And then the second one, I went on the... 13th of the same month, September, so just a few days later, I fished from, uh, now I get the time right, that's 7.20, isn't it? Yeah. The yeah. 7.40, is that right? Yeah. 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 And I had <coughs> two bass, uh, one six and a half, one five and a half, and I was freelining mackerel fillets. At uh, the time I caught them, what the wind was, and so on and so on. Loads of big fish tailing, only feet from the edge, in lots of weed. Two, I only took two baits for me. Two baits, two bites, two fish. <laughs> that, that's where I was fishing. I was right about a lot of weed, wasn't I? There was plenty of weed there. And you can, I guess you can see the fish. I'm probably pointing this. 
There's one there, look. There's another one there, another one there. With the tail. So there were fish feeding on either tier among the weed. But I caught them on these three lined lumps of fish, which is what I've been doing for the past two or three years, just to try it really. So we mostly use lures when we go fishing, but we also fish with baits. And I've taken several of my little group of pals fishing to show them, because most of them don't do any bait fishing, to show them what I've been doing. I'm fishing between sort of two and five metres out usually, you know, rod length out couple of rod lengths out from where I'm fishing and showing them what to do uh, where I do it and everyone I've taken so far I think that's I've taken four or five of them fishing Dave was one I took Dave one day and they've all caught fish not necessarily the first time but they've all caught fish when they've been doing it and they use they say mostly lures so most of fishing with lures and some of it with bait and we're fishing from exactly the same stretch of coast, the same beaches all the time. So it's the same places we're fishing. So presumably all the same fish are there, but you're catching different stuff on different tactics. Now, what I ought to say is that I tot everything up in terms of rod hours. So my 20 minutes there was a third of a rod hour, wouldn't it? I spent, that's one man fishing for 20 minutes. And the others were three men fishing for how uh, many, three hours or whatever it was they fish, which would be nine rod hours. And then if you work that out, about how many rod hours it takes you to catch a fish, it gives you some sort of idea that, of comparison between one time and another time, or one place and another place. And so on. So even you can go back to the 1960s and see what we did then and compare what we caught using similar methods then to what we're doing <coughs> now. Or I can compare what my pals are doing using lures to what I'm doing, how I'm doing using bait. And that's what I've tried to do. So I totted up the catches just for the last year. I didn't bother anything. Else. And last year started pretty grim. We, we had a bad early part of the season and then it picked up later on. And using just the two approaches, either low fishing or bait fishing uh, with three lined circle hooks. And I wondered how many, also how many hours we need to catch what I called a decent fish. Now in the 1670s, I called a decent fish, a decent bass, anything over four pounds. So that was my sort of, uh, guideline for that. See if I said look at the, at the graph and it's about 50 odd centimetres. And uh, I do the same sort of criterion so I could compare the things. So rod hours and the size of the fish. Now using lures in the 1980s we averaged 2.4 rod hours per bass. That's any old bass that you catch. So nearly two and a half hours to catch a bass. That includes all your blanks and, you know, lost fish and things like that, not, not counted. In 2018, two rod hours for low cut fish. That sounds pretty comparable. There's not much difference. So doing the same sort of things. Remember the tackle's improved and the stocks have gone down, but still low fishing, you're catching roughly the same rate. And... In contrast, if you look at fish, the bigger fish, fish over four pounds a week, in the 1980s, we spent on average six rod hours spinning to catch a fish of that size. Last year, almost 60 rod hours per decent bass. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Things have gone downhill. Chin, in the 1980s, 2.1 rod hours, so not much different to low fishing. But a four pound fish, 34 rod hours, so we weren't catching many big fish on the on the bait, probably because of the methods we were using. Last year, 4.1 rod hours for a bat of any old size on my baits, but only just under six hours for a
for a fish of over four pounds. So improved tactics a lot. Now these pictures, that's these are two people fishing in my group. This is Richard. That's the one and only time I took him doing this, and he had that seven pound plus fish. Again from a very weedy spot you look. And this was my next door neighbour Martin. It was the third time I'd taken him, but he's never caught a bass to speak of before. Nothing bigger than about this big anyway, I think. And uh, that was nine and a half pounds that he had on his third trip with me. First trip he missed two bites. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> the, second, the second trip, neither was had a bite, but the third trip he was well satisfied with his life. So, recently fishing over the same ground, lures needed about 60 rod hours per four pound bass, and the bait only six hours. So that fairly convincing, I guess, isn't it? Now, there are various <coughs> things, I'm sure some of you have done the reasons why this is the case. It's not immediately obvious to me why I'm fishing exactly the same places, remember, the fishing with the lures. I fish with the lures, I do the same, I catch the same sort of thing that they do when I do it. So it's not the lures they use or anything like that, I don't think. Um, there's something about putting a bait, two or three, I often lay the bait, I think I've talked about this before, lay the bait high and dry and wait till the tide comes and covers it. And the fish will often pick it up when there's only a foot or 18 inches of water over the bait. But it's certainly a very effective way of catching bigger fish and I, I mean I'm, quite, I'm, I'm getting old now it, it makes my arm ache with all this stuff so it's quite nice just to lob it out and sit there and wait. <laughs> now I thought I was I thought I was only I, the reason I'm giving this little talk or I've given this little talk is that Steve rang me up and he said he said people don't really understand this stuff Mike that you're talking about about rod hours and all that sort of thing I, was that reasonably clear Do you, yeah. Good, good. Right, so I'll do the other bit. I added a bit more on just so you could hear to make more interest. Oh, that's not what it is. That's just a commercial. You ought to read that book if you haven't.